way. John chapter 20. I want to be a help to you tonight. I really do. We'll look beginning in verse number 24 here. Verse number 24. Uh, but Thomas, one of the twelve, uh, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. Now understand here the context. I'm going to get into this just a little bit here, but the context here, this is the uh, second time, excuse me, this is the first time in which Jesus is meeting with his disciples here uh, after the resurrection. This, this time that we're getting ready to read about here is the second time, all right? But he makes this distinction here, but Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came to the disciples. Therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord, but he said unto them, Except I shall see it in his hands, the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Uh, then said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hands, and thrust into my side, and uh, be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God, verse 29, Jesus said unto them, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Verse 30, And many other signs uh, truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, catch this, but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. Let's pray. Dear Lord, uh, thank you for another opportunity to be able to stand here. Uh, Lord, I surely am nervous, and Lord, I do ask that you would calm my nerves. Uh, Lord, I, I do pray that you'd help me, Lord. Use me as a mouthpiece this evening, Lord. Hide me behind the cross, dear Lord. Uh, God, I do pray that you would just help me, Lord, as I stand in this arm of flesh that's failed me will surely fail me again. Uh, dear God, I ask for uh, your help tonight, Lord, for your uh, uh, anointing, Lord. I pray that you'd anoint me, Lord, that you'd help me tonight. Uh, God, that you would just touch me, Lord. I, I stand in need of your help and your touch tonight. Uh, dear Lord, I do pray this message will be a help to your people. Uh, help me tonight to be a Bible preacher, Lord, unapologetically. Uh, Lord, with some authority of the Holy Ghost tonight, Lord, I pray for your unction, Lord. Uh, God, I do pray that you'd help me, Lord, that you'd touch me. Uh, God, help me to only say what I need to say tonight, Lord. I pray that you'd guard my mouth, guard my mind. Don't let me say anything, Lord, that would dishonor you when I stand before for you in glory, Lord. Uh, God, I pray that you'd help us tonight. I pray that you'd speak to our hearts individually tonight, Lord. I pray, uh, God, that you would prick our hearts and our minds. I do pray for the backslidden tonight, Lord, and the brokenhearted. And Lord, I do pray for that one that's closest to hell tonight, Lord. I pray they'd feel those flames underneath the pew that they sit in tonight, Lord. Uh, God, I'd, I'd rather them get a little uncomfortable in here tonight, Lord, than to suffer uh, the eternal flame forever. Uh, dear God, I pray that you'd help us tonight. Uh, we stand in need of your help and your touch. Lord, I love you. Lord, I thank you. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. That's about two hours worth of preaching water right there. Now help me somebody. Amen. Well, I want to be a help to you tonight. I really do. I didn't come to pat you on the back or I didn't come to to tell you what a great job you're doing, you should have went over yonder. Seven hills or crossroads or something. Everybody okay? Amen. Amen. I want to be a Bible preacher tonight. I just want to help you. I want to preach on this thought, if the Lord will help me for just a little bit. Be not faithless, but believing. Now in chapter number 19... We see the events leading up to the crucifixion, and then we actually see the crucifixion of the Lord, Jesus. And then in chapter number 20, we see the resurrection here of the Lord Jesus. And then we see these certain events uh, that are going to take place uh, thereafter here in just a second. Now let me help you just a little bit here. Uh, Mary Magdalene had come to the tomb, and she had seen the stone that was taken away from the sepulcher. And uh, uh, I'll just tell you right now, I believe with everything in me uh, that Mary was very saddened. She was, uh, she was 
confused. Uh, uh, then she went to find uh, Simon Peter and that, uh, that disciple that Jesus loved, John. And she said, they've taken him away. Uh, uh, I don't know where he's at. The stones rolled away. Uh, and Jesus, our Lord, is not in there. And after uh, John and Peter show up, uh, they go to look in the tomb and, and they, they surely see that he's not there and they return back home. And then you see that Mary stood there, this is verse 11, but Mary stood there at the sepulcher weeping. I believe she wasn't just uh, nearly shedding a tear or two. I, I believe that her whole soul was was broken. Where was her Lord at as she stood at the uh, at the, the the opening here of the sepulcher? And then we see that Jesus shows up and uh, he reveals himself to her in verse uh, eight. Or excuse me, let's uh, let's look in verse eleven real quick. But Mary stood uh, without at the sepulchre weeping, and as she wept and stooped down and looked into the sepulchre, I almost wonder if she looked in there. Is it really? Is he really not in there? He he's really not, is he? Watch this now. And see a two angels in white sitting, one at the head, at the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they've laid him. And when she had said thus, or when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Uh, whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou have, uh, if thou have borne him hence tell me where thou hast laid him and I will take him away Jesus said unto her Mary <laughs> I, I believe when he said Mary I believe that she knew exactly who he was she said he said Mary <laughs> Oh yeah, friend. She turned herself and said unto him, <laughs> "Watch this now, uh, Rabbi. Uh, excuse me, Rabbi Noah. Uh, I may not pronounce that right. You'll just have to be all right with that. Which is to say, Master. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I have sinned unto my Father and your Father, and to be my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene came to, and told the disciples uh, that she had seen the Lord and that she had." But, and that he had spoken these things to her. Yeah. Now, I want to draw your attention again in chapter number 21 and verse 14. We see uh, Jesus has met with his disciples again. This is the third time that he meets with his disciples. So here in this particular text where we're at tonight, this is the second time. Now watch this distinction uh, that is made. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. Now, I didn't come to preach here tonight uh, about getting yourself in the house of God, but hey, friend, uh, Thomas could have seen him the first time if he'd have been there. Hey, Amen, friend. Now, look here. Uh, we, don't, we don't exactly know why Thomas was not there. But I wonder, good friend, uh, 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 was Thomas uh, dealing with some other uh, affairs that day? Was he just busy? Why, maybe uh, had he not returned from uh, where they had scattered, where all the disciples had scattered there upon the apprehending of our Lord Jesus Christ? Maybe, he, maybe he'd just gone somewhere and he hadn't come back yet. Uh, had he just made the choice not to come back? Maybe he just said, uh, uh, I'll just not go back. Because watch this. In verse number 18, uh, excuse me, verse 17, did Jesus not tell her to go and tell uh, his brethren these things? All right, verse 18, she goes and she came and told the disciples that she'd seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. Maybe Thomas just decided not to come. Maybe just Thomas was fearful of those uh, Jewish leaders of the day, those Pharisees, if you will. 
I mean, as, as, as brother, uh, uh, brother Doug preached this morning, uh, they found nothing against the lovely Lord Jesus, good friend, uh, but yet they still uh, had to break every uh, Jewish law to be able to arrest him. Maybe he, maybe he was a little bit uh, uh, afraid of them, them Jewish leaders. But regardless this evening, Thomas was not there. And I find it no mistake, good friend, in the King James Bible, uh, bless his holy name for inerrant word of God tonight. It, man, uh, I, find it, uh, I find no mistakes here when they pen the paper uh, that John, one of the twelve, was not with them. He wasn't there. I preached a message here last week on this same text, a little bit different. But at the end of this, I would really like to ask you, good friend, what more could you possibly need? I mean, what more could you possibly need? Jesus said, uh, be not faithless, but... Believe me, by way of introduction, just real quick, I want you to see uh, that that someone was missing. Thomas was missing. Now watch this. Uh, secondly, uh, something is missing. Something is missing here. Well, I believe it is the faith of Thomas. I, I believe the thing that is missing here is the faith of Thomas. You see, uh, uh, you and I have decisions to make every single day. Right? Right? We had decisions to make every single day. And I, I believe that Thomas here said uh, he, he purposed within himself uh, uh, some reason that he was not going to this first meeting with the Lord Jesus after his resurrection. Say, preacher, where are you going? Just hang on, I'm getting there. Hang on. Uh, something is missing. His faith. I like when the, when, the, when the disciples showed back up in, in verse 25, they, they came to Thomas and they said, we've seen the Lord. We've seen him. <laughs> we've seen him, Thomas. Uh, though Thomas said he would only believe it if he could really witness Jesus and really see Jesus uh, for himself. Again, might I just say, good friend, if he'd have been there the first time, uh, he might not have missed out on it. Friend, you don't know what you're missing out on when you don't come to the house of God. Good friend, it ain't just you that's affected. Uh, your entire church family's affected when you're not here. Hey, man, you ought to be at church. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and... So much the more as you see the day approaching. What day? Why, that second coming, good friend. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, I love church. I need more of it. I need to get in church and let a man of God throw in the plow real deep and plow my row, good friend. Yeah, man, I love preaching. Yeah, man, I love singing. I love coming to church. Yeah, man. That's just a side point. <laughs> now, I want to show you this. Being able to believe in something requires you having faith. Requires you having faith. Now Jesus says here, be not faithless, but believing. Be not faithless, but believing. I want to show you just a few things here. Number one, I want you to see some personal barriers. Some personal barriers. We see that people, they put up walls and they put up boundaries and the reason they do that is so that they can keep themselves from having to believe in something they've done made up their mind and they've done purpose in themselves they won't believe uh, Thomas said this, he said, uh, uh, except uh, this, 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 and this, and this, I'll not believe. Now watch this. There's some people uh, that come in the house of God, and, and you may not do it visibly, uh, uh, but what they do is they cross their arms, and, and, and as the preacher begins to exhort, and he begins to rebuke, uh, good friend, with all long suffering of doctrine, and what they do is they sit back and they scold, and they say, huh, huh. Yeah. 
Good friend, I, 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 honestly, when I get to preaching, I, don't, I, I can't even hardly tell you what's going on out here. Uh, but sometimes you do notice. They may not do it visibly. They may not sit in front of you and cross their arms. Uh, but what they're saying, you can see it all over their face. Come on, preacher, what you got? Come on, come on, preacher. Come on. They have done purposed uh, within themselves, good friend, uh, that they will not believe. And Thomas said, unless this and this and this happens, I will not believe. Now watch this. This message was sort of born uh, when, brother, you was preaching here a few weeks back. Brother Doug was out, and you preached about going to church. Now you said something about, you said something in that message. He said, you know, it would do us a lot of good if we would just believe that God could actually do something. Yeah, right. It, man. it would do us a lot of good if we, could, if we would just believe that God would do something. And this is for the sinners and the saints tonight. Good friends, so you're going to get it either way, wherever you're at spiritually. But I want you to understand something, friend. Uh, what we do, whether you're a, whether you're a Christian or, or if you're lost, uh, we set things in ourselves and we say, unless God can do it this way, unless God can do it that way, unless it happens this way, unless it's written in the sky, uh, on the clouds, good friend, I will not believe. Yeah. And man, friend, us as Christians, we, we got things we'd love to see God do. I tell you right now, I've got some people in my family and my friends that are lost as a jaybird in a hailstorm on their way to hell. And I'd love to see God do them. But how often do I say, well, Lord, well, Lord, I just don't know. Lord, I, they might just be out of the reach. Watch this. There's many people that, 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 that have a, a wayward child out in the world and they say, well, you know, I, I'll not really get in on the good stuff. Uh, I, I, I'll not praise him. I'll not, I'll not worship him uh, until my kids come back home. Thomas said, unless I can stick my fingers in the nail prints in his hand, and unless I can take my hand and feel his side uh, uh, where they stuck the spear in him, good friend, he said, I'll not believe. And I'm wondering how many of us tonight, uh, Christians uh, and the lost people alike, how many, how, many, how many of us are saying, Lord, unless you'll do it this way, unless it can happen this way, I'll not believe. Well, unless I can do it my way, I'm getting there, friend. That's third point. That's third point. These barriers, why, they're, they're based on expectations. They're based on, watch this now, experiences. Oh, Lord, I get so sick of hearing that. They're based on exceptions. Except. Thomas said except. And many of us have expectations. And we say, uh, uh, unless it happens this way, I'll not believe. How many of us believe that we could, that, that God could actually do something with us? But we don't allow Him to because uh, we've already said in our heart, well, I'll not believe. How many uh, lost people are sitting here tonight? Uh, 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 preacher, I just love my sin too much. Uh, uh, preacher, I just don't understand it all. Uh, preacher, I just don't understand how God could love me. I just don't understand how all how, how Jesus uh, can take away all the sins. I don't understand it all. Friend, when you get to looking at the situation and you forget how big God is, my friend, uh, that's when those things come come in those expectations those exceptions uh, those experiences you begin to make those bigger than what God is and we say I'll not believe not only do we do it to the preacher we do it to God 
Come on, God. What you got? I'll not believe. Now, regardless of where Thomas was that day, Thomas wasn't there. <laughs> oh, yeah, friend. <laughs> I like when Jesus shows up here in a few minutes. You hang on now. It's based on ex expectations and exceptions and, and experiences. Well, preacher, you just don't know what I've been through. I don't know what you've been through. But I know a God who can take care of it, good friend. Hey, man, uh, friend, I, I don't know what's happening in your life. But I know one thing, uh, uh, friend, you're going to have to junk all that. Uh, you're going to have to junk your, your pride. And you're just going to have to get to the place where you can say, you know what? Regardless of everything else, I'm just going to believe them. Uh, good friend. But how are you going to do that? You're going to have to have a little bit of faith. I'm getting there, but watch this now. Unbelief is due to the lack of faith. And when you uh, 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 have that lack of faith and, and uh, that unbelief is, is in your heart, good friend, uh, you begin to put your terms and your conditions over that of God's. Right. Right. Amen. I, I was talking to a boy not long ago, and he's Catholic. And the Lord allowed me to go and, and, and try to help him. And, uh, boy, it, glory to God, I about, I about took a lap in there. So they believe, John chapter number 6, Jesus is speaking where he says, you must eat of me, right? Eat of my body, drink of my blood. So they say, okay, we're going we're gonna to really take this, this loaf, this wafer, and, and, and we're going uh, 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 to do all this stuff. And we're going to literally eat your body, Jesus. And we're going to literally drink your blood, Jesus. Well, I, I begin, I said, he, he, well, I, I was going over this, that, and the other. He goes, well, you know, I, I, just, uh, I, I just can't get over John 6. You know what he was doing? He was purposing in his heart, <laughs> I'll not believe. I'll not believe, preacher. But watch this now. I begin to explain to him John chapter number 6. Obviously the Lord Jesus is talking about spiritual things. He goes on to talk about uh, back over there in the Old Testament when they were in the desert and they had cried unto God and they said, Lord, uh, we've had this forever. We've had all this manna, all this manna, Lord. Uh, we want something different. Okay, the Lord sent quail their way. <laughs> a whole bunch of it, good friend. He makes that distinction that it's a physical bread. Yeah. Amen. It's a, a, a physical uh, thing that, that, that uh, helps us grow and nourishes us, right? Amen. Help me, somebody. But Jesus uh, begins to then, he makes this distinction. He, he, he makes it different uh, that he's not talking about that. He's not talking about physical bread, good friend. He's talking about partaking of the Lord Jesus himself and what he'd done on the cross, good friend, when he shed his precious blood. Oh, yeah, friend. Boy, it got good. The Holy Ghost got in there. I was about to take a lap. I was getting real excited. And he was sitting there really not understanding what was happening. And, and friend, I, I believe that I began to see tears welling up in his eyes. And I, I would have loved to have seen him get saved. But he said at the end of it, you know, I just, uh, I just can't go against what's, what's been there for me. He said, I'll not believe. He said, I'll not believe. So many lost people like it. I, I'll not believe unless this. <laughs> unless I understand. Uh, until I can get uh, where I need to be. Until I quit drinking. Until I quit cussing. Uh, that's, when I'll, that's when I'll get right. That's when I'll come to church. 
Uh, when I understand it all, that's when, I'll, that's when I'll be there. Can I tell you, good friend? Uh, when I was seven years old and I was lost, I didn't understand it all. I, I, I didn't understand what all was happening here in John chapter number 20, but I'll tell you one thing that I understood, that I was lost. Oh yeah, friend, I was on my way to a devil's hell and I was going to bust it wide open if I didn't get saved. And I remember getting down there. Actually, I remember I was crying and, and I didn't understand what was happening uh, and, and mama walked in the bedroom and, and she was like what's going on I said I'm lost uh, I, I don't know what's happening and, and I remember getting down and I don't remember what I said <laughs> don't, let, don't, don't let that make you nervous now uh, but, but I know what happened <laughs> oh yeah friend I know in whom I have believed <laughs> Amen, friend. I didn't understand it all, but I knew that I didn't want to go to hell and that Jesus was the only way. <laughs> oh, yeah, friend. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming down the Father but by me, good friend. Amen. I'm moving on. Y'all all right? Yeah, man, I'm having a time. Not only do we see this personal barrier, we see a proven book here watch this go down to verse 30 and many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book but these are written you know I, I'll be honest with you I preached this last Sunday and I got to looking at that later this week and I was like what was I thinking but these are written these right here I mean, yes, everything else, but this right here. Uh, this is written so that you might believe is what he said. Hang on now. Hang on, let me get back up here. Verse number 31. Uh, but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and believe that you might have life through his name. Head man right there now. Uh, but these are written that you might believe uh, this being a real historical chain of events this is real good friend uh, oh yeah uh, this is not a book of fairy tales uh, this is not Disney good friend oh it's much better than Disney <laughs> oh yeah friend uh, we have a, uh, an errant uh, an inspired and infallible word of God good friend and it was written so that you and I could believe on him Hey man, we have a proven book. It's real. Yeah. You can believe the Bible, friend. Right. Right. You can believe the Bible, friend. Right. Hey man. Amen. All these people today, these modernists. I don't want to preach on that. But it makes me sick. Yeah. Right. It makes me physically sick. I talked to one of them just a little bit ago. A few, well, not today, but a few weeks ago. He called me up, compromiser. That's right. I won't call his name. I called the churches, but I won't call his name tonight. But he got talked, brother. We're all in this together, bro. Preaching Jesus. That makes me sick. Amen, friend. Look, I'm glad you're preaching the gospel, but it's your methodologies in which you do it. Right, right. If you act like the world, if you smell like the world, if you talk like the world, if you look like the world, you might just be of the world. These modernists are looking for the newest translation. Good friend, we got a Bible. I don't know what much more you need. It was translated in English. Amen. How dumb do you have to be? But they're looking for some new translation. These Catholics are looking uh, toward the old uh, uh, writings of whoever it was, uh, uh, Angel Macaroni, whoever, good friend. Uh, uh, people are looking this Scientology and all this mess. They're looking at all these, all these new things, new discoveries uh, to be this new religion. <sighs> but good friend, I want to tell you, we need to get back to the book, friend. Yeah. Amen. Right. Amen. We don't need nothing else. Right. Right. We don't need nothing else. Right. Look here real quick. I wasn't going to go there, but you might as well turn over with me. Second Timothy. If I can find it. Second Timothy chapter number 3. Verse 16. All scripture 
It's given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That tells us what's right, that's doctrine. Reproof tells us what's not right. Correction tells us how we can get it right. And then instruction tells us how we can keep it right. I like this next part. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished in all good works. He's saying, what more do you need, good friend? I mean, we have the inspired, uh, infallible word of God, good friend, uh, all Scripture all scripture so that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. What more could you possibly need, good friend? Uh, we have a proven book. Yeah. Amen. 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 I want to show you some things real quick. This is, like I said, a, a real historical chain of events. It was real. This really happened. Uh, Thomas really did say, uh, I'll not believe unless this happens. Jesus really did get up. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The book is true. There's also uh, not just this particular passage, but there's enough evidence throughout the entirety uh, of the Scriptures uh, for you to have, be able to have enough faith to believe this evening. Jesus said, Be not faithless, but believing. But believing, he said. Now let's look at this faith part, because that's important to this. I said earlier... That, without, or that, that being able to believe in something requires uh, having faith. Now turn over with me to Hebrews chapter 11. I want to show you something. Now faith, verse 1, is the substance of things hoped for. For the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained the good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Jesus said, blessed are they that have not seen, yet have believed. Amen. Look here now, faith is sufficient in this. Amen. The whole premises of this, you say, preacher, where are you getting all this? See, uh, because Thomas had no faith, uh, he said, I'll not believe. So it might just be this evening that, that all that stuff that you've got going on that you say, well, preacher, unless this happens and, and all this aligns, I'll not believe. Maybe it's just that you have a faith problem this evening. Now, I want to say a quick word about faith. Faith is not just uh, this thing for special Christians. Uh, faith is not just uh, faith is not this thing that's just uh, floating around out there for for uh, uh, the highly uh, good Christians. Hey Amen. It's for everybody. Hey Amen. The Bible says that to get saved, uh, we're saved by faith. Amen. Uh, uh, Amen. Amen. Help me, somebody. We're saved uh, by faith through grace. You got to have faith uh, to get saved. Amen. So, so, so it's not just offered uh, to all the good Christians out there. Amen. Amen. Thought I'd just say that real quick. It's, it's not this mystical thing. It's, it's something that you can really get a hold of. Watch this. It's not only sufficient, it's solid. The Bible says now faith is the substance. <laughs> Friend, you can hold on to it. Right. Hey Amen. It's really real. Right. It's, it's really real. Amen, friend. Uh, it really exists. It can be felt. It can be experienced. Uh, it is solid, good friend. Uh, this substance, you say, what is that? Well, the substance, I believe, is, is the very words uh, contained uh, within the Word of God. And friend, you can uh, hold on to that. Watch this, what it says in Romans ten seventeen. So then faith cometh by hearing. Uh, help me, somebody. And hearing by the Word of God. <laughs> Everybody all right? Yeah. Hey, man, I'm about to blow a gasket. Help me, Lord. So then faith cometh by hearing and, and, and hearing by the Word of God. 
So uh, uh, faith here is the substance of things hoped for. This Bible, like I said, uh, it's true from beginning to end. Uh, there is not uh, one imperfection uh, throughout this Bible, good friend. Uh, and you have something that you can hold on to. Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing cometh by the Word of God. Faith. Faith. The substance. The thing that you can really get a hold of. It's solid. It's sufficient, good friend. See, if you say, well, preacher, I've got a faith problem. I want my faith to be strengthened. Well, you, you really can get your faith strengthened. Strengthened. Lord, help me. All this country talk, y'all ain't going to know what I'm saying. Hope we won't be lost in communication, but seriously. Say, preacher, I've got a faith problem. I, I need my faith strengthened. Well, I, I believe that God can do that. Preacher, I just don't know if I have enough faith that I could believe. Well, if we have the Bible and if you're saved, the Bible says that it's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is sure. It's the evidence. Y'all picking up what I'm laying down here? <laughs> it, it's, it's sufficient it's solid and friend faith is sure this evening it's the evidence uh, all of these things mentioned in chapter number 11 here uh, when it says for the elders obtained a good report for by it by what preacher uh, by, this, by this faith the, the, uh, the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen good friend uh, that's how they retain that good report oh yeah friend well I'm thankful this evening uh, uh, that God can give us that measure of faith good friend that's sufficient and it's solid and friend it is sure now watch what it says here verse number 6 well before I get there let me help you let, let me just help you with something I heard of this lady, and I'm not exactly sure who it was, but <clears throat> what she would do is somebody picked up her Bible, and she had TP written all down through it. They say, TP, yeah, TP. And somebody come up, my master said, I seen this, I picked up your Bible, and I seen you had TP written all down through here. So what does that mean? She said, honey, that means tried and proven. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 the evidence of things not seen amen it's it's uh it's the substance of things hoped for good friend if you uh, need any reason to believe this see this this evening uh, the bible says that all it takes is just a, a faith as big as a mustard seed uh, amen to move a mountain good friend uh, uh, you can get to the place where you can believe faith is sufficient it's solid it's sure now watch what it says in verse 6 but without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a warder of them that diligently seek him I might even dare to say it's a sin to come to him without faith it's impossible to please him uh oh preacher what, what, what good are you doing yourself when you come to God with the problem that you ain't got no faith that he can even do anything about it we got the people that say alright whatever but then we got the people that say I'm coming to God I wonder why he won't hear my prayers because you don't believe in your heart that he can actually do it you've convinced yourself that you know what I just don't know preacher my, my experiences you know I, I was hoping God would do it this way I, I was hoping that this would happen friend it's a faith problem I believe that you're struggling with now watch this we believe that God is for he that cometh to God must believe that he is now watch this we believe that he is but how do we allow ourselves to live certain days or certain areas in our life acting like he's not? 
Amen. Amen. See, Jesus said, be not faithless, but believing. you got to have faith to believe in something. Now, I'm getting back over the text here in just a second. But, uh, Jesus there said, uh, you're going to have to have some faith if you're going to believe. Now, I'm moving on here real quick. I want you to see this. Not only do we see that uh, personal barriers, not only do we see that proven book, we see this particular belief. It's a particular belief. Let's go back up here, verse 24. Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The disciples therefore said unto him, We've seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see us in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger in the print of the nails, and thrust my hand to his side, I will not believe. Now maybe you're here tonight, and you've got to the place where you just say, You know what? I'm not going to believe. I'm not going to believe. I'm not going to believe the Word of God. I'm just uh, not going to get saved. I ain't going to do it. I, I could care less what you say. Uh, uh, I just ain't going to believe the preacher. Thomas said, unless this, this, and this happens, I'll not believe. Uh, maybe this evening uh, uh, you just ain't going to believe uh, uh, that God can actually do something in your situation. But then we see this particular belief here. It's a belief that's personal. It's individual. It's a decision that one has to make to make the decision to accept or reject the truth now watch this and after eight days his disciples were within and Thomas with them then came Jesus and the doors being shut and stood in the midst and peace be and said peace be unto you then said he to Thomas isn't that funny <laughs> isn't that funny Thomas wasn't there. But then he tells his disciples, unless this, this, this happens, I'm on, I, that's when I'll believe. And then eight days later, Jesus just shows right up in the midst of them. Yeah, right. yeah. Amen. Right. I'm going to keep going here. Then uh, saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, behold my hands, and reach hither my hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, uh, 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 thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Thomas came to a point where he had to make that decision. I want you to see uh, the relevancy of the timing here. The relevancy of the timing. Friend, we are drawing closer and closer to the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I, I know that's, that's not a popular message anymore, but I'm here to tell you, good friend, uh, all the signs are pointing up. Uh, we're getting ready to check out of here, good friend. You can stay here for the rapture if you want, or for the, for the tribulation if you want to, but I'm checking out, good friend. Hey, man, I'm out of here. But we're drawing close. And we've got a, a generation that seeketh after a sign. I'm just, I'm just hoping for this to happen. You call him mashed potato brain. I'm country, so I call him mashed tater brain. <laughs> Amen. If you're putting your faith in that, God help you. Right. Yes, right. Amen. Amen. If your faith is in the Republican Party, they're just as corrupt as the Democrats. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Amen. 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 If, if you're hoping, good friend, uh, that you will get into heaven on the coattails of your mama or your daddy or your grandpa or your grandma, I've got news for you. When the time comes, you'll bust hell wide open. It's a personal decision. And you have got to make the decision tonight. 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 Are y'all hearing me? I said, tonight you've got to make a decision. 
Thomas had a decision that he was either going to accept it or he was going to refuse it. Hmm. Now a wicked and adulterous nation seeketh after a sign. I'm just waiting for the stars line, preacher. Friend, if you wait, you're going to be too late. Amen. I'm telling you, I, I try and I try and I try. I've been trying to get some of my friends to come to church. I've been telling them, come with me. Come on, come on. I'm, I said, I'm even preaching tonight. They wouldn't have, they wouldn't have known because, you know, they ain't never been to anything like this, but I'd probably scared them. <laughs> but I said, uh, I said, just come with me. And they said, well, you know, I got this going on, this, that. How many times do you pray for somebody to get saved? We preachers can preach and we can preach and we can preach to we're blue in the face, but good friend, it's a personal decision tonight. Now, if you're lost, you can leave out of here uh, lost as, as a ball in high weeds and, and you can go right out them doors. Uh, no hope of tomorrow, good friend. Uh, not knowing when you might draw your last breath uh, and you'll wind up going to hell. Maybe you're here tonight and you're saved and maybe your heart's not right and you got some things that you need to get settled. Uh, preacher, uh, I just don't know if God can do this. I don't know if, if God can do that, friend. Uh, why don't you come up here uh, and meet the helper, good friend, and let him help you so you can start believing in him more. Right. What good it would do if we just believe he could actually do something. We want revival. Oh, we want revival. We want revival. We won't pray about it. We won't seek the Lord. Well, you know, I'm just hoping God will do something. I'm not preaching about just y'all, okay? Don't, don't get nervous now, okay? They, uh, we say, well, we want God to do this and we want God to do that, but we just don't believe He can actually do it. The problem is, you and I as born, as born again uh, uh, people, uh, we get to looking at the situation and it begins to overwhelm us. But, but what we need to do is quit looking at the situation and we need to start looking at the Savior, good friend, uh, and realize how big He is uh, uh, compared uh, uh, to that thing that we've got going on. And we need to do what Jesus said, Be not faithless, but believe it. Amen. Ephesians chapter number 2, verse 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved. <laughs> Through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God. Not of works. Not of works. Lest any man should boast. I was talking with another boy. And he said, uh, you know, preacher... I just, uh, I think I've been good enough. He said, but, uh, you know, I, 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 I just don't know. And, uh, well, I began to ask him a little bit. I began to test him on his salvation. Now, I, I don't want to doubt your salvation, okay? But if you don't know, you probably ain't saved. The Spirit bears witness with our spirit. Amen. Thank the Lord for that. But I began to ask him, I, I said, what kind of life is that to live? Not knowing whether or not you go to heaven. Not knowing whether or not you'd go to heaven. Jesus said, be not faithless, but believing. I'm here to report to you tonight that you can know. Amen. And I'm not a Calvinist. Any of you Calvinists that might have crept in here, you can fight with me later. But I'm glad it's a whosoever will salvation. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Good friend, uh, I'm glad this scene, I'm getting ready to finish up, but i got to get here real quick. I'm glad that I'm not serving the dead God of Buddha or the dead God of Muhammad. Good friend, uh, I'm serving the God of Israel.
Amen. The God of Jacob and the God of Isaac, good friend. The God of heaven, that's who I'm serving. And friend, he wants to do something for you, and I believe that with everything in me. Now some preachers, uh, they get real nervous when they go to preaching on Jesus wants to bless you. Because see, all these modernists, he wants to bless you with a jet, and he wants to bless you with a yacht and all this. Friend, he really does want to bless you. Hey man, uh, I don't read nowhere in the King James Bible where he'd try to turn you into a millionaire. That's a false gospel. Joel Osteen's going to hell. You, hey, you can like it or you can lump it. But good friend, uh, I do read where Jesus can change your life forever. <laughs> Be not faithless, but believing, he said. Thomas had a decision to make. Watch this. The revealed truth. Jesus had revealed himself and he manifested his presence there and the truth had been revealed. I dare say the truth has been revealed in the scriptures this evening. I don't want to act like I'm anything. Can I tell y'all I'm just green? I don't know nothing hardly about this. By the help of by the help of my man of God he has helped me and, and showed me how to be able to try to put a text or try to put an outline here to a text and try to help you as I preach. Uh, I don't know. It may not be that good. It may be really good. It may be helping you. I don't know. Uh, it's alliterating. That's helping my OCD. But, but I do know this, good friend. I want to be a Bible preacher. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Right. Amen. This is not a pep talk. I said, I done told you where you can go get that. This, this ain't a pat on the back and tell you how good you are. This ain't the Oprah Winfrey show. Uh, good friend, I'm here to tell you that the Bible is true and you can believe it. You can believe it. I dare say that the truth has been revealed through the Scriptures tonight. Not only did Jesus reveal the truth of the Scriptures here, because he said in verse 30 and verse 31 that, but these are written. But these are written that you might believe. See, everybody's seeking for that other stuff. They want something big and new. And, and I get all that. I understand that we as preachers, we, we want a new message and and we want to give it to the congregation and try to help them. But friend, uh, Jesus is the only message we've got. Amen. 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 I dare say that Jesus not only revealed the truth of the Scriptures, but the truth of himself. Maybe Jesus is revealing himself to somebody tonight. He's walking right up in your situation. I like there. See, Thomas didn't show up the second time. Or Thomas didn't show up the first time. Ain't you glad he showed up the second time? And then Jesus walks in here. He said, all right, Hoss, you've got all these, all these things that you need to be met. Let's just see what happens here. And he shows up and he said, look here. Stick your finger right there. And then he said, look at my side. He said, this is where they stuck the spear in me. <laughs> hey man, friend, uh, maybe you showed up broken hearted tonight, uh, needing a little bit of strength. Good friend, I'm here to tell you, it's a good time when Jesus shows up. And maybe uh, tonight as I've tried to help you through the scriptures, uh, maybe Jesus uh, is doing something that only he can do. I can't do it for you. The preacher can't do it for you. Mom and daddy can't do it for you. Your wife can't do it for you. Your husband can't do it. Uh, this is something that only Jesus can take care of. And maybe he showed up tonight. Maybe he showed up tonight in your situation and he's wanting to do something. Now I want to ask you, what more could you possibly need? He's revealed his truth through the scriptures. He's revealed his truth through himself. He is who he said he is. He said, if you're going to come to him, you're going to have to believe that he is. How many of us believe that he is tonight? 
Amen. But if you're going to believe in something, you've got to have some faith. And tonight, as we've looked at this and Thomas not being there, I wonder tonight, I really do wonder, will you just show up where Jesus is at? Amen. I, again, I'm not trying to tell you I'm anything. I'm nothing. Y'all probably think I'm crazy. But I've tried to show you something from the scriptures tonight. And maybe Jesus is trying to do something for you. And I'm here to tell you, be not faithless, but believing. Do you believe that he can save you tonight? Do, do you believe that he can do something with you? I don't know about you, but I want to be something for him. I, I look here, I'm sick and tired of dead up, dead, dried up, uh, no good religion. Yeah. Come to church on Sunday, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, because that's just what we do. I ain't for that junk. I'm over that, good friend. Right. I want something real. I want him. To, I want to be used by him tonight. Right. Do you believe he can do it? Do you believe he can do it? Be not faithless, but believing. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.